welcome back to my channel. This week I am bringing you Halloween recipes from around the world. But before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up so that way we can keep on growing. Now, our first stop is Mexico and we're making pan de muerto, which translates to bread of the dead. So let's get cooking. start by taking our yeast and some warm water and we're going to add that to a bowl with a pinch of salt and mix that together and then we're just going to go ahead and set that aside and then another bowl we're going to take our sugar and our butter and we're going to cream those together and don't hit the release button on your hand mixer and once that's creamed we're going to add one egg at a time so between each egg we just want to cream it again and then we add our salt some orange zest and mix that together and I added the flour piece by piece just so that way it gets mixed in evenly and it doesn't make too much of a mess and then it should start to become a dough I was supposed to add the yeast with the wet ingredients so I just added it in here and I continued mixing everything together and I ended up adding some additional flour. I did it slowly, tablespoon by tablespoon, and ended up adding about one-fourth a cup of flour. The dough was a bit sticky, and the recipe didn't say that it was supposed to be a sticky dough, so I just did it until I was able to tap the dough, and my hand didn't stick, and then I felt like I was good to go. And then I moved the dough to the side, and I brought in another bowl, which I greased with some avocado oil spray, and then I moved the dough into the bowl, and I just went ahead and covered that with some saran wrap. I did end up covering it with some tea towels and then I uh, used the trick of turning my oven on and then turning it off so that way it was warm and I put my dough in there to proof. And then once that was all proofed, I floured my work surface and I moved the dough onto it. And you don't really have to knead this dough, I just kind of shaped it. And then right here, I am sectioning some pieces of the dough out to shape them into what is supposed to resemble a skull and four bones for the Day of the Dead. And so once you have your shapes to resemble the skull and bones, you're just going to tap your fingers in some water and then move them over the places on the dough where you want them to go. And then you're able to just apply your skull and bones. And once you have that, you're gonna brush everything with an egg wash. And then put it in the oven and this is what it turns out like. I topped mine with some sugar and then I moved it to a cooling rack and I waited very impatiently for it to cool. Okay, here it is. Um, okay, so I think it came out pretty good. Uh, the recipe that I followed, I followed it because it seemed pretty approachable. I can link a couple other resources down below, but for someone who had like never made a bread like this, I felt like it was pretty doable. I also love that these are supposed to be like bones, and this is technically like a skull. If you should, I'll, maybe I'll insert some photos here, 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 whatever. These are beautiful by other people, and I think mine came out pretty good for the first time, but it is by no means as gorgeous as some of them can be made and like just put together so well. But I'm gonna taste it. Let's see, I hope it turned out okay. And it didn't say, like in the video, they didn't put anything on it, it didn't say to, just the sugar on top. Oh my gosh. That's what it looks like on the inside. Oh my goodness. This whole time, the smell has just been so good. I can see the orange pieces. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna go in for like a full bite. That is so good. It's really soft on the inside, but so like sweet. But not overly sweet because you have the orange that kind of like powers it. And there's a nice crust on it which I'm very impressed by. Oh my gosh. So when I was looking up um, some history of this or like what the purpose of this bread is, like if there is any like symbolism or anything. And I guess um, for Dia de los Muertos, um, the Day of the Dead, it is one of the offerings that they put at the altar uh, to kind of feed the souls. Uh, I'll also include a link to where I was reading up on that. 
Like, I also think it's, like, super fun, and I love that. And that there's a little history behind why they make this bread. And that's why they're supposed to be, like, skulls and bones on the outside. I am very happy right now, enjoying my bread of the dead. So when I was doing research, Mexico had a few other dishes that were uh, associated with All Souls Day and Halloween and, uh, you know, a lot around this holiday. So I definitely encourage you to kind of look up that and see if there's any other foods that maybe you've seen before around the holidays that you didn't realize were associated with Mexican culture. Especially if you decide to try this bread because I think it is delicious and super fun. It's something to make around Halloween if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but now we are going to go to our next country, which is Italy. And we are making eggs in purgatory. So let's get cooking. Oh my God, I, let, I made this. <sighs> I thought I was gonna be able to save some, I don't know, I might eat it all. Our next recipe comes from an Italian holiday cookbook that I was gifted by my parents. There are actually a bunch of other recipes associated with Halloween in here if you decide to pick it up. And if not, you can screenshot the recipe here. Now let's cook. We're gonna start by taking either a cast iron pan or in my case, a Dutch oven and put that on the stove over medium heat. And we're gonna just add everything that the recipe says. So we've got olive oil, black pepper, red pepper flakes, onions, and green bell pepper. We're just gonna mix all of that together I threw in some garlic, and then we have some canned crushed tomatoes and a pinch of salt. And then we're just mixing that all together and we're gonna let that simmer. And while that's cooking, we're gonna make our polenta. So I'm just adding some chicken broth and milk into a saucepan and I'm just bringing that to a boil. And then once that's boiling, we're gonna go ahead and slowly add in our polenta. And I did switch to a whisk because I wanted to make sure I got any clumps out. And after that was incorporated, I added two tablespoons of butter. And then I just mixed that in until everything became beautiful and creamy. And then I just left that on a low heat to stay warm. And at this point, it should be time to add your eggs. And what you're going to want to do is make sure you crack your egg into a separate bowl. And then you're going to make a well for where you're going to gently drop the egg into. Kind of like when you're poaching an egg. And so I thought it was kind of hard to make a reasonably sized well. But everything did turn out for me. And so once you have all of your eggs in the wells, you're just going to take your basil and break off little pieces on top. And then you're just going to cover it back up and let the eggs continue cooking. And then eventually they will look like this and your house will smell amazing and you'll be so excited to serve everything up. Okay, I have been so excited for this one. Um, if you were thinking about how eggs in purgatory it looks like something you may have had before but it's probably because it's very similar to shashuka which i believe is a north african dish um and it is very similar i mean eggs and tomato sauce however my recipe called for it to be served over polenta and so i think that uh you know the origin or the symbolism of this of this dish in association with Halloween when I was looking up is just because the eggs kind of look like they're in purgatory you know they're not um, they're just like stuck in the sauce which I think is very fun and fitting for Halloween but let's go ahead and try it oh my goodness this is like my new I need to make this more wow you know what this is good for this is good for if you were like entertaining for like a brunch I know there were only four eggs but you could probably make it in the oven because I didn't really do much to cook the eggs. I also thought that it was made in the oven, but maybe shashuka is just made in the oven. Um, but yeah, because you could like probably do it with like a big like like baking pan and then do like a bunch of eggs if you wanted to like double the batch. Do not sleep on this one. I'll also link the cookbook down below. I know I had um, some clips of like the actual ingredients and you can follow along with how I was cooking. Um, also feel free to comment below if you have any questions on any of the recipes, um, just because I know, um, I was following someone else's, so I might be able to offer some tips and tricks if you have any struggles. Yeah, this is delicious. If you haven't had polenta before, um, it's kind of similar to, like, any, like, breakfast, like, warm breakfast hot cereals. 
except it is, you know, definitely savory. I wonder if I can ever make polenta sweet. It probably is a texture for it because it's just cornmeal, really. But the way it's prepared in this recipe with just some chicken stock and butter and a little bit of milk is delicious. I was just picking on it by itself before because it's so good. But the onions and the peppers, everything just comes together so well. I definitely think, you know, the jammier the egg, the better because it kind of adds to the creamy element. However, I would literally eat this like without the egg. Like I think that this like tomato sauce mixture with the polenta is delicious. Highly recommend eggs and purgatory if you are looking to try a Italian Halloween recipe. And I will also say, you know, feel free to look up any more Italian recipes associated with Halloween or also Day, just because there were also more. When I looked them up, there were more in the cookbook. Um, if you are looking for something possibly sweet or maybe a different savory dish, there were a couple options. We are now on to our last country, which is America. And we are making popcorn balls. Let's get cooking. And then you want to take your butter and melt that in a saucepan on the stove. And to that, we're going to add some brown sugar and a whole package of mini marshmallows. And you just want to mix everything together until it all melts down. And when you lift your spatula, it drips like this. And then you take that off the stove and we're going to take our popped popcorn. I put mine in two bowls at first because I was afraid of making a sticky mess. And I added the mixture over the popcorn. And I just slowly mixed everything together to the best of my abilities. Honestly, for this, the bigger the bowl, the better. I feel like it is a little bit hard to mix. But once I got it all mixed together, I just buttered up my hands and grabbed some of the popcorn and started forming them into balls. Now at the end, because I had some trouble mixing, it was definitely a little stickier than the beginning, but I decided to butter my hands back up again and then just go ahead and reform some of the ones that I think needed some reinforcement. Okay, we have our last recipe, popcorn balls which uh, upon my research seemed to get popularized in the 1950s. However, upon cooking them, they seem very close to Rice Krispie Treats. And originally, you know, I looked it up, it said Rice Krispie Treats were created in 1939, and I was like, okay, well these were like 1950s. However, I found a very detailed article or blog post, which I will also link below, uh, that seems to argue that, you know, these could have come before Rice Krispies, which, I don't know, but which one's ripping off which, because they're pretty much the same ingredients. <laughs> uh, but that being said, let me go ahead and try one. <clears throat> it's pretty good. Shockingly, it's like not oversweet, which I was worried it would be because you had the addition of the brown sugar. The brown sugar just kind of gives it like a caramely taste. Um, I will say I, I can tell the difference between the ones I made first and the ones I made last because the ones I made first are like this one and this one was like towards the end. And the main difference is that this one has like less coating on it. And I think that's just because I had trouble mixing it. Because you kind of like have to mix it before you just start like forming the balls because um, Otherwise, it'll end up like this. And I did mix it, but I feel like I needed a bigger bowl to like safely mix it. I was very nervous I was going to get stickiness everywhere as well as popcorn everywhere. So I kind of played it on the safe side. These were not hard at all. I feel like these are really good if you have some kids in the kitchen or you have, you know, some family around and everyone wants to, you know, get their hands dirty and, and go ahead and help out. It's pretty easy. I feel like the recipe that I had didn't have a lot of ingredients. There are definitely ones out there with more ingredients like corn syrup and other, um, other items, which I guess would make those recipes a little bit different than Rice Krispies. But I feel like overall it was great. The recipe I did use also said you could add cranberries or toffee bits. However, pretty much no other recipe said to add that. Some of them did say you could add other items in the popcorn balls. I feel like it could have been an ad adaptation later. Uh, and then some of them said that you can also decorate them, which I feel like is more fun. 
because I think that adding like toffee bits in with all of the sugar and then with like the crunch of the popcorn, I feel like that'd be like a lot on your teeth. But if you added stuff on top, it'd be really cute. Like maybe some um, like orange sprinkles or things like that. Orange icing, just to kind of, and black icing, just to kind of give it that Halloween vibe. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching my Halloween foods from around the world video. If you like what you saw, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that way we can keep on growing. Bye!